Hello and welcome to the Trade Ideas Live Trading Room Recap for Friday, June the 19th. My name is Barry Enerson. I'm the moderator of our room. This is the address to get into our room and you can log in with your Facebook or your Twitter account. Okay, Friday, quadruple witching day. Now I have this one up here. Just, uh, this was a bit of a frustrating one. I mean, this, I, I'm sort of going to blow off, not some steam here, but I mean, I just find it kind of amusing sometimes when you're a day trader. Some of the things that can happen and you just sort of scratch your head and wonder why. This is one that I actually got into. Um, uh, it wasn't on an, actually a, a trade ideas alert. I, I had this one up on a thumbnail chart from, I guess, a couple of days ago and I hadn't removed it. And I just happened to notice it and I saw it was uh, trading pretty nicely, right? I mean, it already had the nice pop, bit of consolidation and right at $50. So I decided, okay, this looks pretty good. Take the trade right here at 5008. And it was holding, holding, holding. And then it decides to make the drop down here. And I don't lose very much, 50 uh, uh, 49.97. So I'm, I've only, uh, I'm only out 11 cents. I usually, I tend to t try to keep my stops very tight. And, you know, I sort of forget about it. And you see how it just kind of drifts down. Looks like, well, that's it for the day. And then it just pops back up. It does almost the same thing. Look at this. Almost the same thing right here. But for, for whatever reason, this time it decides to take the big pop up and it almost puts on a dollar. And, you know, you, you sort of just wonder, well, okay, why didn't it do this here? Why did it decide to have to have this jog down first to drive everybody nuts and then and then go up? Anyway, <laughs> just kind of a little bit of a rant there. I kind of found it amusing. I mentioned in the room, AM, whoops, AMCN was my first trade. And actually, this kind of made my day because this happened in the pre-market. Uh, AMCN, I think it had been, it had been beaten down horribly. Let's just take a look at the daily chart on it. And yeah, you see it was up here, a 7 -11, and it got all the way down, uh, 353, almost half. I believe they did some kind of a financing and, uh, that was one of the reasons why it was, uh, why it plummeted. But then in the pre-market, they made an announcement that the I think the CEO and the chairman of the board was going to make a, a pitch to the board that they were going to uh, take the company private at six dollars. And so, of course, that really juiced the stock up um, right here. I think this is when they made the announcement because here it is at eight, eight o'clock in the morning. They make the announcement around right here. It does the big pop. Now, look. I was skeptical uh, because, you know, when you read the press release, the actual press release, they said, you know, they, I mean, they, I know they have to do this, but they put in all sorts of terms like this is, you know, potentially non-binding. We don't know if it's going to go through. It is a China company. Uh, you know, you never know uh, what, what, uh, what could happen. So I got into this with my eyes wide open. Uh, I took it right here. I mean, this is just after 730, I guess. I took it right here at 481 and I sold at 425 and 430, uh, sorry, 525 and 531. And that was it. And you can see that it really did nothing for the rest of the day. It, uh, it did try to, it did try to get uh, to the high of the day. Uh, like here is the high right there, 531 in the pre-market, but it really hasn't. And admittedly, I mean, it, it's only got in theory up to $6 to go, but I think a lot of people read these press releases and go, yeah, right. But anyway, that's just my uh, my two cents on it. Uh, HNR was another good one uh, early. HNR was one of those ones in which it um, had some news again in the pre-market. Uh, so we were watching it because of the pre-market activity. 194, it was up to uh, 230. Now, I actually had said in the room that, uh, you know, I start watching this over $2. And what happened? Uh, let's see, it uh, pulled back a little bit. And, and now I should show you this because it's had some crazy, crazy, crazy days. Look at this day back here. This is a daily chart. Here's a day back here when it was 47 cents and it popped up to $1.21. Um, had another crazy day here, uh, 98 from, from 65 to 98. So this one can get really uh, uh, crazy. And I, I was hoping it was going to get actually more crazy, to be honest. Uh, uh, when, when this uh, happened, it popped over two pulled back down it uh, held to um, and I ended up taking the trade right here so it held it held to took the trade right here at uh, 234 um, you know it popped all the way to 260 but it went way too fast for me and I couldn't get out and I ended up taking uh, some out here at 244 and the rest actually had a bit of a loss at 230 and now it's over who knows why 
I think um, I didn't actually read the news on it, but I mean, obviously it fizzled because now it's down for the day. Uh, BWA, BWA actually was a pretty uh, a pretty decent one. Um, it was it was um, my bounce plays uh, in the room. I actually uh, posted this link yesterday. Now a lot of you might already have my bouncers two and five minute, but I decided to relax the uh, the filters on them. Um, I think it didn't have to be as d down as many red candles in a row. Uh, didn't have to be as down um, that much as much as I had it before in 30 minutes in terms of dollar amount, so, things like that. And so consequently, I received a lot of alerts immediately. Now the one that intrigued me the most um, was. B WA, you see right at 6018. So when you look at, uh, so I received the alert uh, right around here, watched it fall, reclaimed 60. So I took the trade at 6006, took some out at uh, 6023. Um, and I held for the longest time. I was just really waiting on a, on a, on a 50 break, uh, see if it was going to break 50. And uh, when it didn't break, uh, you know, that, I basically said if it really fell, fell uh, below 50, I, mean, I know it's 47 right there, but it was holding this level for a long time. Uh, eventually, I sold right here at 60.45, so a long, long hold for me anyway. And uh, so it worked out quite well. I mean, um, I'm, I'm going to, uh, it's, it's interesting to me, though. I mean, I didn't receive another alert after 10.46. So all the alerts happen really quickly, and um, so have to see what happens with with this one on uh, Monday. Uh, you know, to be honest, too many alerts really. I mean, I, I obviously can't take a look at them all and act that quickly, um, and not not all of them are actable. I mean, you still have to wait for a setup. Now the next one I did take was blocks, and it worked out minor league. Where is blocks? Blocks, and again, you see, right at twenty seven dollars. So if we look at blocks, B L O X. Um, so here, here again is why I was getting the alert. Here, here's the the downward action, and uh, it got as down as a 26.97, but still relatively close to the whole number. Um, took the trade right here at uh, 27.10. Got rid of some at uh, 27.20, and again I. I, I wasn't fast enough. I usually what I try to do is I'll take some profit here, and uh, then you know the worst I, I'll do is get out at my buy, but it went down a little too quickly. Only three cents, so I took another loss, little loss here at twenty-seven oh seven. But uh, you know it it's interesting. I mean um, I'm, I'm going to have to w really uh, monitor this sort of new bounce uh, strategy a little more closely. See if I can pair it just a little bit because uh, too many alerts at, at, at the beginning. I really couldn't uh, follow them all. And let's see, uh, yes, WLDN, it wasn't too bad actually, um, I got out a little too soon probably, uh, WLDN was on the Dan's 30, this is the opening uh, range break, uh, 30 minute opening range break, 1139. Um, I had to wait a little bit on this. I took the, and this was a tough one. Um, actually, you know what? I took the trade, I think, right there because I had to suffer a little bit as it as it went down to 11:36. Took the trade right there. Uh, you know, the alert was at 11:39, and I watched it. So the alert would have been right here, and so I watched it go down, came back up, came back down. And then finally, uh, when it uh, got up again, I decided to take the trade at uh, 11.44. Um, it, but, you know, the spread was, wasn't great. Um, ended up uh, doing not too badly. I want to say not too badly. You'll see why I should have held on, obviously, a lot longer. Um, I got out some here at 11.77. It uh, looked like it was uh, really going to romp, maybe get through 12. Uh, but on this action, I decided to take some out here at 11.77 and the rest at 11.73. Um, and that, but you can see, really, I should have held on a little bit more and would have gone through, uh, look at that, I mean, 1240, 1239, um, you know, this action obviously would have got me out, but even if it got me out right here, would have been a lot better gain, just didn't have the patience. But, you know, not a lot of volume. I mean, it's still only 329,000 shares with an hour and 15 left in the market, so not that much volume. 
And let's see, the last one was MIC. This was a frustrating one. Um, you know, we were looking at the search channel, and, and this one came on the search channel. I believe it was um, on the most interesting right now. You don't see it right now because it's not very interesting anymore. But at, the, at this point, I think it was uh, on the channel. Now, you take a look at this, and this, in theory, is what we're looking for. This is a bit of a consolidation, um, you know, fairly long. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, almost an hour. You get the big volume spike right here. And in theory, through consol through consolidation on a volume spike, the stock should move up. Well, I waited on a little bit and watched it come back down to 87.27, popped up a little bit and decided to take the trade here at 87.33. Looked good. Thought, okay, this one's going to work, 87.44. And then it fell back down and I actually exited right here at 87.23 for a loss. So, you know, just kind of frustrating. Um, people ask me all the time, uh, you know, I'd like to have a pattern uh, for a breakout through consol consolidations. And I, you know, I tell them, it, first of all, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a difficult pattern to model. But I... In my experience, I just don't see them working with any consistency. Yes, you always get the ones that, uh, and the ones that you remember. I think there was one, if I can remember the symbol H, ah, H, H, maybe NM. Let's see if that one is right. Yeah. So you see this one. This is what we're looking for. Here's a lot of consolidation. Here's the pop. And it did follow through. Of course, those are the ones you remember. You know, you get in at 262 and it goes up to 286, on, which is great uh, percentage on a, on a small stock. And these are the ones you kind of remember. And you think, well, why don't they all do that? You know, and this is a fairly long consolidation, granted. But nonetheless, you know, it, it has a similar look to the other one, to MIC, in that you have the consolidation and then you get the big volume pop. But, um, you know, they don't all work. And I just haven't found any consistency in their working. All right, that's it for uh, that's it for it today. Um, here is again how to get into the trading room. Here's the address. You can log in with your Facebook, your Twitter account. I hope everybody has a great weekend, and we'll see you in the trading room on Monday.